Welcome to the Old Tom Radio Superman Show. When last we left our, our heroes, Su uh, Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen were waiting around. And we're going to find out what happened at that cliffhanger. Uh, before we get started, I want to encourage you to check out Laser and Sword Magazine. Issue 3 is out. That is available for purchase. We're uh, working on Issue 4. should be uh, available probably in November. So I encourage everybody to download that. Uh, if you want to enjoy the best in modern serial fiction, uh, check out Laser and Sword Magazine. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is that uh, our podcast is, uh, is, is downloadable. And the, the site where we're using to track some of our stats is not picking up all of our downloads. Um, shows us where in the world people are um, who download our program, um, and it's actually pre it's actually pretty interesting um, because the the show is international. The top downloader, of course, is the United States. Uh, next after that, I'd like to say uh, the second most uh, the nation with the second most downloads of the old time radio Superman show. You probably won't believe it, but it is China. China's, uh, we're, ba we're big in China. Canada is third, A. Eh? Um, followed by, and apologize to Canadian listeners for that bad attempt at a Canadian accent. I won't attempt accents uh, on the other ones. Um, is uh, Canada, United Kingdom, Germany, the European Union. Okay, uh, I, I am I'm trying to figure out the whole. Okay, in terms of the whole country, uh, uh, I guess that's just where it sources it. But European Union, sure, uh, Finland, and then other countries. We we had two downloads from Colombia, a download from Fra France, a download from Spain, a download from Italy. So. Thank you to everybody who is listening to the Old Time Radio Superman show around the world, um, showing, I think, the worldwide appeal of Superman. Um, I, do know, I don't know what, what's behind it, but, we are getting, but on all my shows, uh, we're identifying a, a huge number of uh, downloads uh, from China. Uh, in fact, on the uh, Dragnet show, uh, we're uh, the ones we've been able to identify, which is a small portion of the total number of Dragnet, much smaller portion than on the old time uh, uh, Radio Superman show. Uh, we actually are getting more downloads from China than the U.S. And even on my political show, which talks mainly about U.S. politics, uh, we are getting uh, just a, a deluge of downloads from uh, China. Um, so I think the podcast iPod Revolution is taking uh, taking shape there, and people wanting to enjoy, uh, at least with the old time radio show, Superman show, some of the classics. So, all right, well let's go ahead and get right into it. I uh, know you're waiting to ha see what happens in the Lighthouse Point Smugglers Part Three. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. <laughs> It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, valiant fighter for truth and justice, mighty champion of the weak and the oppressed, who has appeared on Earth from the planet Krypton with a physical structure never before attained by mortal men. Superman, who is stronger than a locomotive, faster than a speeding bullet, and who walks about among human beings disguised as mild Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. When we last saw them, Kent and young Jimmy Olsen were on the New England coast at the home of Jimmy's Aunt Louisa Horn. Curious events have led them to think that a mysterious group, possibly smugglers, are trying to use Miss Horn's house for their own end. Hearing sounds under the kitchen, they had burst into the locked cellar, only to find it deserted and empty. Kent then sent Jimmy upstairs on an errand and was about to investigate as Superman when Miss Horn's voice brought him back up. The old lady swore she had seen a flashing light in the old tower on Lighthouse Point, abandoned for over 50 years. Kent and Jimmy dashed out into the night toward the point, but once clear of the house, Kent pulled the boy back. 
Possibly Miss Horn was merely trying to get rid of them, he explained. Better watch. See what happens. But our story continues today. Kent and Jimmy are crouched back of a bush. Before them, the lighted windows of Horn House. Beyond them, the dark tower of the old lighthouse. Listen. Listen, Mr. Kent. No fooling. You don't really think my Aunt Lou had anything to do with this, do you? Jimmy, I don't think anything. Not yet. All I know is there are some very peculiar things going on in the neighborhood of Horn House. What do you mean? Keep your eyes on that window. What's your aunt doing now? Not a thing. She's just sitting there at the kitchen table. What do you mean by peculiar things, Mr. Kent? Well, first of all, the location. Why, it's unnatural for smugglers. Lighthouse Point goes out there to make a little bay, then the beach and Horn House, and then Lighthouse Creek, where the dock is. Well, they couldn't ask for a better location. But, gee, Aunt Lou's not a smuggler. Now, I didn't say she was, Jimmy. But I do say this. For some reason or other, maybe it's a perfectly good one. She's not telling all she knows. Uh, did she get up just then? Don't think so. No, no, she just moved a chair. Go on, Mr. Kent. Well, she's frightened of something. She's afraid, but she won't tell us why or of what. Golly, I don't see what that proves. She's scared somebody's going to break in on her. I wonder, Jimmy. If that's so, why was she out on the beach in all that rain and storm when our catboat was wrecked? She said she was looking for us. Ah, but when we landed, she was running away from us. And what about the light in the lighthouse? Did we actually see one there? And did your aunt see one while I was in the cellar? Or is she just trying to get rid of us for a while? Gee, I don't know, Mr. Kent. Yes, I do, too. What? Mr. Kent, look behind you. Look at the tower of the lighthouse. Great Scott. Jimmy, there's a light. Your aunt was telling the truth. About that, anyway. Come on, quick, run for it. I've got the flashlight, Mr. Kent. Let me go first. You know the path. Watch out for those rocks. It's not far. Less than 100 yards. What do we do? We get there. We'll find out who's working that light and who he's signaling to. Almost there. Take it easy. All right. Listen. Don't I hear a boat off there in the fog? I don't hear anything. Oh, never mind. Where's the door? Right here. Golly. Mr. Kent, look. It's open. Jimmy, anybody live here in this lighthouse? Not now. When Aunt Lou ran the farm, the farmer lived here. That's what the wire's for. Wire? Where? Oh, yes. The telephone wire. Aunt Lou ran a telephone to the house in case she wanted to talk to him. Quiet now. Snap off your light. Golly, I should have done that before. They'll see us for sure. I don't think so. All right, come on, up the stairs. Take it quietly. I'll go first now. Mr. Kent, what do you think's going on? Oh, Jimmy... Remember we heard a boat on our way across the bay? Yeah, speedboat. And right after that, we saw the phony light. The one that wrecked us. But what of it? Look out for the railing. All right, thanks. After we got into the house, we heard people or something in the cellar. But we didn't find anything. Well, we didn't really look. But I'll bet I know what's happening. That speedboat was guided in by the light and landed something. Near enough to Horn House, so we heard them. And now they're getting away again. And that's what the light's for. Smugglers. It must be. I shouldn't wonder. Now then. How high is this tower? I don't know, but we're almost to the top. I keep quiet now. There we are. Now, you stay right here on the last landing. Where does that door go to? Into the light room. I want to come with you, Mr. Kent. No, no, there may be trouble. You stay right here. Keep the flash. What's that big bell? That's the old fog bell. Take it easy, Mr. Kent. Listen. I hear him moving around in there. Steady. I'm going to crash that door. You stand back, Jimmy. Mr. Kent, you should have brought the shotgun. Don't need it. There may be trouble, like you said. Got to take a chance on that. Stand back now. Oh, wait. Maybe the door's not locked. I'll try the latch. Quiet. Not a sound. It's locked all right. The light's still going. I can see it through a crack. Now, Jimmy, whatever happens, you stay right where you are. Or beat it back to the house. Maybe that'd be better anyway. No, I'll stay with you. I'll keep out of the way. We've got this fella. There's no way out except down these stairs. He can't get away from us. Maybe you better wait until he comes out. No. Whatever he's doing, it's time we stopped it. But I don't want you to be mixed up in it. It's no place for kids. Oh, please, Mr. Kent. I'm not a kid. You go down the stairs. Wait for me down below. All Quick. right. Now, go on, Jimmy. If you say so. Follow if you need me. I will. He's 
still in that lamp room. And I think it's time he had a visitor. Now! Who's that? What are you doing with that light? Put it out and put down that gun. Where'd you come from? Stand back! Look out! I said put down that gun. Quick! Now we'll see how you bounce. Oh, quit that. Put me down. What do you think you're First of all, out with that light. Oh, oh, put there. me down. You're killing me. All right. Oh. I'll put you down. Oh. There. Oh. Now, quick. What was that lamp for? And what are you doing around Horn House? Hurry up. Start talking. You'll never know. Listen. There's the boat now. And you can't stop me. Stop. stop. Come back here. Oh, the fool. He went through the window. And it's 50 feet down. Well, I hope it's deep water. <laughs> Gotta go after him. Out we go. Out. Out. No, he's not. He's sinking. Must have struck a rock. It's going down. Uh, there's the boat. They're trying to get to him. Pick him up. Well, let's see who's quicker. Down we go. Right into the water. Now. Uh, now then. Got to get him before he drowns. Then I'll get that boat. Uh, there he is. Got him. Now, up. Up. Care of your pals with the other. Ah, there they are. They see me. They're scared to death. Well, look out for yourselves, boys. Here we come. Wait, what's that? The bell of the lighthouse. Jimmy, Jimmy, the trouble is ringing the bell. I've got to get back there. Can't stop to worry about the boat now. Got to get back and help Jimmy. Up we go. Up, up, and away. Kent, where are you, Mr. Kent? Coming, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Coming. What's the matter? Are you all right? I'm all right, but what about you? Golly, whatever happened? Come here, lend me a hand. Our friend in the tower went overboard, right through the window, and I went after him. It did. Jiminy, did you hurt yourself? Well, I didn't, but he did. Hey, give me a hand. Get him inside. He's out like a light. Yeah. Jimmy, what was the matter? Was it you ringing the bell? Mr. Kent, I was scared. You were gone, and I didn't hear anything. It told me not to go up to the light room, but that wasn't all. Here we are. Golly. All right, help me put him on that bench. That's it. There. Now get him back to the house and see what's what. Oh, go ahead, Jimmy. What happened? What scared you? Mr. Kent, it was the telephone. The telephone? What are you talking Mr. about? Mr. Kent, just after everything got quiet up where you were, I heard the shots. Golly, what happened? Well, never mind that. He missed me, and then he jumped through the window. Go on with what you were saying. Mr. Kent, the telephone rang. It rang like anything. Yeah? When I took it off the hook and answered it, there wasn't anybody there. What do you mean? Just what I said. All it did was ring, but there wasn't anybody on the other end. Quick, Jimmy. Where does this telephone go? I told you, it runs between the lighthouse where we are right now and the big house. You mean your aunt's house? That's the only house there is. Jimmy, where's the phone in the big house? I mean, where does it hook up? In the kitchen, right where Aunt Louisa was. Well, quick, tell me, how does it work? What, what, what do you do to make it ring? Just push a button right under the phone, and a bell rings at the other end. Huh? There it is again. Listen. Jimmy, you keep your eye on that fellow on the bench. If he moves, sing out. Okay. Hello? Hello, who's there? Miss Horn? Miss Horn, is that you? Miss Horn! What is it? Isn't there anybody there? Yes, yes, there is. There is somebody there. Right at the other end. But they won't answer me. Miss Horn! Or if it isn't Miss Horn, who is it? Mr. Kent, hang up and ring the button on this end. Make it ring in the kitchen and see what happens then. No. No, I don't want to do that. I've just thought. Jimmy, it may be that your aunt doesn't want to make a noise. Any noise at all. She doesn't dare talk. Golly, why? I don't know. Do keep your eye on that fellow. He's moving. Jimmy, I've got an idea. Listen, I'll send a message to your aunt on this phone. If you keep quiet. Miss Horn, listen to me. If you can't talk, if you want help quickly, ring this bell three times. Miss Horn, can you hear me? When I hang up, if you want us to come quickly, ring this bell three times. Golly, do you think she heard you? Shh, wait, Jimmy. Wait. Phone bells ringing urgently in the dimness of the old lighthouse. What has happened to Aunt Louisa Horn, left alone facing the locked door of her own cellar? Who was the stranger picked up by Kent after his plunge from the lighthouse tower? And where is the speedboat headed after its terrifying glimpse of Superman winging down from the night sky? Don't forget to tune in next time and follow the thrilling story of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! 
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics Magazine. All right, welcome back. Uh, actually, after that last twist of sitting still, I, I think that this episode has got probably some uh, very uh, good uh, realism shown in. Uh, a couple things I do like about the, this series so far. We're into part three, and we haven't met the villain yet. Uh, generally, they'll let us get to part one not uh, knowing what's going on, uh, and then we will get... Hello, I am the villain. Here is my evil plan. Um, and that kind of spoils the fun. This time, they're holding off on the villain. Maybe we'll hear, meet the villain in part four. I don't know. I haven't uh, listened that far in the series. I'm kind of discovering it along with you. Uh, but obviously, I, I think one thing about this format is it does provide... Uh, they do. They are providing some good you know, obstacles for Superman. Uh, in... Lou of Kryptonite, which, you know, uh, becomes a plot point later on in, in the, the series, but much later, uh, into the mid to late 40s, you get a, a lot of Kryptonite episodes. Um, but at this point, in lieu of Kryptonite, and in lieu of a villain that can defeat uh, Superman, uh, they're managing to throw some in, uh, conveniences in it inconveniences in Clark Kent slash Superman's way, and I think they're a little bit more believable than perhaps they've been in some other series. So this is actually turning out to be fairly good in some very interesting ways. So, all right, I'm going to wrap it up here, and I encourage everybody to go and check out, uh, uh, go to Podcast Alley, cast your vote for us, Old Tom Radio Superman. Your vote is much appreciated, and uh, you can leave a comment as well. Email your thoughts to adam at adamsweb.us, and, and as always, check out Laser and Sword Magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. For now, this is Adam Graham, signing off.